Columbia Con 2023. Bada bing, bada boom. Starting off in Charleston, South Carolina. The home base for Rush to the Front, LLC. Good morning. I'm on my way to Columbia Con. It is 5.30 in the morning. Hopefully it takes about an hour and 45 minutes. I have load in. And then the con itself starts at 10 a.m. Let's go. All right, so tire pressure was low. I just put each tire up to 32. I think it's PSI. Don't really know, but it's at 32. It's all even, should be good. And let's check it out. Columbia Con is held at Embassy Suites Hotel in Columbia, South Carolina. It's roughly a two hour drive. This is a small con with some dedicated fans and strives to feature fandoms of multiple genres. There are several benefits to tabling at a smaller convention as a comic book creator. Being that Columbia Con is two hours away, it makes for a day trip, which keeps expenses low. Here we're at, at the Embassy Suites, Columbia, South Carolina. This was my first time here, so I arrived an hour early to get acquainted with the space and find my table, figure out the best setup. So a guy just tried to fight me through a cart. I let him have it. There's like five others around the corner. It's really weird. A major benefit at any convention, even a smaller convention, is networking and various opportunities that can arise. There were a couple big fish here in the convention world. One was at the table next to me. Another two artists that I was able to identify via illustrators and being a beginner when it comes to tabling surely I missed some more all three individuals I was able to connect with grab their contacts and theoretically stay in touch with a perk at tabling at this embassy suites is a free continental breakfast after a two hour drive I took advantage Secondly, direct interaction with fans is a big benefit to these smaller cons. They do attract dedicated fans who are interested in discovering new and independent creators. Two targeted audience personas examples for my fan base are There was a good amount of feedback and critique that I received from fans and from various vendors and individuals tabling. <laughs> Engaging with a smaller and more focused audience definitely provided valuable feedback and critique for Mud Freestone. Some of the most valuable feedback I received was from the teams tabling to my left and to my right. The table on the left shared valuable information how they grew their 3D print toy business through TikTok and conventions. The table to my right had more experience and a stronger convention routine through the past decade. But their business was very successful and it did rely on consistency with conventions and it also had a wide range of toy memorabilia options and strong networking ability through street marketing. The next benefit I'd like to briefly talk about in regards to tabling at these smaller conventions is increased visibility. 
with fewer exhibitors at a smaller convention, comic book creators like myself have a higher chance of standing out and attracting attention to my work. This theoretically helps increase visibility and exposure for Mud Freestone the Mad Dog. Now there are plenty of sales opportunities even with a smaller crowd and smaller numbers. What I notice is the smaller convention has a more targeted audience that is specifically interested in comics and graphic novels. This can lead to better sales opportunities for comic creators looking to sell their work directly to fans. Now a pain point for most collectors is wanting to see the series completed before purchasing. Issue number one for Mud Freestone is complete. So, a priority is working on issue number two, which needs to be revised and then placed into production. Once one through five is complete, what I've noticed via other comic book creators and teams is there is a lot more traffic at their tables, obviously more time, um, more commitment to these conventions, social media platforms, etc., etc., grows the fan base, uh, grows the traffic, and uh, increases sales. Seemingly the majority of the audience here at Columbia Con was very attracted to toys, memorabilia, tailored to very popular comics and characters like Monkey D. Luffy. I slightly mentioned it before, but this convention was very cost effective for me. So that's a huge benefit and I'll definitely do more smaller conventions, especially if I'm breaking even or maybe even making a slight profit. All right, Columbia Con's over. Made some good connections, good exposure, got some great ideas. Broke even, which is, I'm good with that. I went for the uh, networking and just getting it out there. Now, the guy next to me, his best year in the past, he said about three, four years, obviously uh, probably past three years with COVID and everything. He said boothing or tabling at conventions, he was doing three to four a month, one to three days a week, and he made over 250K profit. His worst year in the past several years, he said it was only about 81,000 profit. That's crazy. The man was selling stuffed animals. Good for him. Good for the kids and everyone else that was buying those stuffed animals. I broke even. I was stoked with that. I have so many ideas how to build this thing now after two cons. This is a success. I am very, very happy I'm doing this. And whoever is listening to me babble, I love you. I freaking love you. Okay, at some point, I'm going to make all these YouTube videos from Baltimore Con, Columbia Con, what's next. There's a lot coming. Stay tuned. Have a great freaking Sunday, Sunday, fun day, all. Tabling at a smaller convention as a comic book creator can offer a unique and rewarding experience that allows for personal connections, creative growth, and potential opportunities for success in the industry. But it feels so freaking good to take a product, something that you've pushed from the start and go and sell it and go say hey check this out it's an amazing story it needs to be told you need to read this you need to listen to this it's going to affect you it's going to tickle you i don't even freaking know but it feels so fucking good <laughs>